this is my attempt at a flagpole antenna. I'm putting it down at the lakefront. This is the flagpole that I purchased for $140. It's a 25 foot. But a lot of modifications I need to begin to make to get uh, some of the experiments I want to do with this. I'm using a 3 inch PVC pipe some couplings, a cap, and a 3 inch to 2 inch reducer. The couplings I'm going to use as spacers between the flagpole mast and the PVC pipe. But I have to trim a little bit off or it won't fit inside the PVC pipe. This will isolate electrically the antenna from the PVC pipe which will be placed in a concrete base. So this will help minimize the capacitance as much as possible from the concrete base to the antenna. I have to size up the rubber coupling so it'll fit inside because it is a little bit on the large side. The lower section of the flagpole that sticks up above the PVC pipe. There will be a two inch piece of PVC as a coupling for experimenting with uh, putting a coil there. So that's why the base will be upside down. The, the, the bottom section will be upside down. Right now I'm working on the bottom section which will be capped, glued and capped, and then I'll do the top section the same way so it'll also have a rubber spacer and that'll be the lower section of the flagpole. This coupling will be a little bit more difficult to get in between the flagpole and the PVC pipe. Probably have to hammer on it a little bit because it there isn't much space there because the flagpole diameter is a little larger at this end of the pipe. Now I'll put the bottom cap on to seal the bottom of the assembly. The rubber spacer is all in place so now it's just a matter of gluing the the cap onto the bottom and then we're almost ready to place this into some concrete but first we got to make uh, one more part the top part here and uh, it's got to be sawed off though some the flagpole won't quite fit inside so I have to ream it out a little bit with the saw Okay, once I have the hole large enough for the flagpole to fit through, we'll take some sandpaper and try to smooth it out best as possible and get ready to seal it on the top end of the base here. And we'll use this flex shot first to add a little sealant to keep the water out of the base. We don't want water collecting in the base of the antenna. So everything that's going to have to be sealed pretty well all the way up. And once the antenna is in the concrete, it wouldn't be easy to pump water out of it. Although if you stuck a hose down there and a whole lot of water got in it, you could probably pump it out. But you don't want it to get in there to begin with. So we're going to seal it up as best as possible here. Okay, I'm going to seal the flagpole base up against the PVC coupling with a bead of flex seal. Got to keep the water out of this thing. We don't want water 
getting down into the base because it could be quite difficult to get it out and once this is all hardened and and so on it should make a pretty nice uh, seal so now I'm going to make the coil section which is just an experiment this is a piece of PVC that fits inside of the flagpole sections um, the first and the second section and this is just for some experimenting so it's going to create a, a insulated spacer between the two sections so I'm going to place this into the flagpole and leave just a little bit of space that we'll be able to wind a coil on just uh, just for experimenting I'm going to mark a couple spots where the PVC will be exposed and that's where an experimental coil can be wound this clamp is for assembling the rest of the sections of the antenna so the top section that fits over this piece of PVC won't fall down farther it, it actually stops the uh, top sections from coming down till I can tap it with a screw this is the clamp for the rope that also has to be watertight okay I've got the base poured concretes all in and now I'm gonna put the spacer in for experimenting with a, uh, a coil and there's the uh, spacer I just have to drill it put some stainless screws in with some rubber gaskets for leakage then the coil form will be there for experimentation The first two sections of the flagpole are now in with the spacer in between and now it's time to put the rest of the flagpole together and get it all mounted. Got all the sections here laid out on the ground and getting the, the very top ready for uh, mounting and also got to make those threads watertight okay it's time to put the flagpole completely together I'm going to drill put in stainless steel screws with rubber washers trying to keep the water out as much as possible so everything's got to be watertight now the flagpole is totally mounted now it's time to drill a hole here at the base for a SO239 for some more experiments this will be some uh, n-fed experiments I'm going to do on the antenna so I'm going to have a SO239 available here at the bottom for a feed point I'm going to 440 tap the holes here then use the flex seal to seal the SO239 for water okay put a ground to it. I put an 8 foot ground rod down through the concrete into the ground. In fact it's it's sitting in water because it's at the lakefront. It, the end of that uh, that copper rod is sitting in water. So it should have a pretty good ground. And once we have the SO239 grounded and it's internally connected to the base of the flagpole should have a nice experimental end fed connection here and check a little continuity just to make sure there's no impedance to ground and we'll start uh, doing some testing 
I tried connecting to the uh, flagpole directly just to see if it was resonant anywhere <laughs> and it wasn't resonant in the ham bands at all and there's no radials of course and an NFED would really need radials. This is a final sketch of the flagpole antenna functioning on 20 meters and 15 meters. So I experimented with a load coil here uh, feeding the end here at the SO239. Did some experiments there. I ended up with a PVC insulator here and tried a off-center fed flagpole antenna. I've got a 4 to 1 ballon here with 30 feet of 450 ohm ladder line. The flagpole at the PVC insulator here is split with a bottom section of 104 inches and a top section of 162 inches. So the the SO239 that I was experimenting here at the bottom I put a 68 puff inside a connector and put it here to help the 15 meter band a little bit. So now both 20 and 15 the entire band is covered quite well with the antenna and it does work like I said without a tuner on 20 meters and 15 meters. So it's perfectly resonant at those two bands. I'd like to try to get it to work at 10 meters eventually. Um, but right now, uh, 20 and 15 are working very well with this. So this is the flagpole antenna as it stands right now. We have ladder line connected going over about 20 feet over to the shed and then another 10 feet down to the 4 to 1 ballon and then connected to LMR 400 coaxial cable. Okay, winter is upon us now and I want to shoot a little video here. Each section I had to put a hose clamp and tighten them real tight because the winds here get pretty fierce and the antenna would loosen up where all these screws are and uh, I'd have to take it down and retighten all the screws so I have a hose clamp around the coupling of each section to tighten up the antenna because the SWR was all over the place as the antenna blew in the wind and that tightened it up quite a bit okay here's the SWR I've got it set for seven, seven point two mag, fourteen point three, eighteen oh nine, and twenty one dot three on the markers. And the wind is blowing the antenna, so the number two here is bouncing around a little bit but it's staying below 1.5 to 1 and that's the uh, 20 meters uh, number 3 is about a little over 2 to 1 that's 18 meg and um, the number 4 here is 15 meters but uh, it is blowing around in the wind a little bit out there the uh, again here's the SWRs for the, uh, the four bands I'm, I'm looking at with the with the flagpole antenna. So like on uh, 14 295 I'm at 1.37 uh, to one and again uh, it's one point, around 1 1.2 to 1 for 15 meters. So no tuner needed for those two bands. Here's some receive signals picking up on 20 meters. And then I'll go up to 15 meters and 
Try and, that out. Uh, maybe you could email it as well, just in case. Ted, thank you. Appreciate you, buddy. See ya. Hey, I just sent it to you again. Plus, I think I might have, I might have emailed it to you. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure. I don't know how to drive this phone. Here I, <laughs> here I am working on 25 kilowatt broadcast. <laughs> CQ-15, 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 from WA-4-AMT, WA-4-AMT, calling CQ, standing by. WA-4-EMT, is it? This is Whiskey 9, Charlie, Juliet, Charlie. Okay, W-9, Charlie, Juliet, Charlie, I believe uh, this is WA-4, Abel, Mike, Tango, Abel, Mike, Tango. Thanks for the call, the QSB is heavy. Uh, I don't know how good the band is. I'll try to give you a report on the next over. The name is David, named David, uh, located near Panama City, Florida, in northwest Florida. Thank you for the call, W-9-CJC, I believe, wa 4 AMT. Okay, David, and I'm trying out a new flagpole antenna actually right now, and uh, hopefully it's uh, working pretty good. I don't have the amplifier tuned up for this band, uh, so right now we're only running about 80 watts here. Go ahead. This is another quick look at my NFED antenna. And again, uh, no tuner needed uh, on 75 meters, which I have marker 2 on 3.90 megahertz. It's uh, about 1.5 to 1. Uh, 1.79 to 1 for 60 meters and 1.24 to 1 for 40 meters. Um, but there's a lot of snow out there on the wire right now so it always runs a little higher but uh, I still haven't conquered um, the uh, 160 meter band yet that's still way up there at uh, three point about three point six but we do have seventy five sixty and forty covered here and then the flagpole will do twenty and fifteen so all those bands uh, without a tuner needed and that's that's kind of my goal here is not to have a tuner so you can just switch from band to band without uh, without any uh, other issues. So for now I'm going to leave the flagpole antenna as is and use it uh, on 20 and 15 meters.